Kat here to explain the next part of the components, which is events. So components are set up to allow user interaction with an applet, and that's not much good until you actually set up that interaction. Events is about setting that up. Let's look back at the applet that we created. We've got a text field for entering a name, we've got a checkbox for selecting a gender, and a drop down menu for selecting an age. Now the idea would be that the user would look at this, they would type in their name, select their gender, and from the drop down they would pick their age. Obviously that's not going to drop down because it's not interactive. And then once they're happy with it, they're going to hit the submit button. And then we're expecting a response to happen. In order for a response to actually happen, we need to tell the button that it can listen for user interaction. So what we need to do is we need to set up some action listeners. Then also we need to set up an area where there are actual responses to those events. So pressing a button is called an event, so a user generated event. So we've got to tell the button it has to listen then we have to have a section of code that will allow all the responses to happen. And in there, we've also got to figure out what we want to do. In our case, what we want to do is we want to take the text from the text field and assign it to a string because it is text. We want to assign it to a string and we want to call it name. We want to take the gender and that's probably also a string because gender is a word. And we want to take the number selected and we want to assign it to an integer. So we can't just do that. There are actually steps that we need to take. So this is where we need to look at Eclipse at how that is done. Okay, so now that we're looking at Eclipse, what I've done is taken everything from the components applet that we created and pasted it into a new one called Events. Now, there's a number of things that we need to do. One of the first things that we need to do is when we're setting up something to use Events, we need to import another one of these little packages. So we need to import java.awt.event.star. And that will grab everything that is event related for us. As well as importing those, we need to tell it that it is going to use um, some of those events. So we need to say implements action listener. So it's using the thing that allows us to listen to user generated events. So extends applet and implements action listener capital A and capital L. Now here it'll tell us we've got an error and if I click on it, it pops up and it says add unimplemented methods and if I look over here it says something about action listener dot action performed. As soon as we implement action listener, there is another method that we need in our class to set up ready to accept user generated events. So our methods here, we've got public void in it. We've got public void paint, which currently doesn't have anything in it. Then down the bottom, so before the close brace of the class, but after the close brace of paint, we put in public void action performed. So that's a lowercase a and a capital P. And in there, it takes an object called action event, and we'll give that action event the name E open and close braces. So while our program still doesn't do anything more than it did before, it's now set up ready with the action listener and action performed. Now what will happen when we do use action performed, once we've set up our button to listen and to respond to user generated events, our program, we open it up, it runs through from start through in it through paint and it stops. Public void action performed will only happen when a user generated event occurs. So each time that button is pressed, this method will be called. 
Only then will it happen. Now one thing that I usually do as well as soon as I create Action Performed is I put in something called Repaint. Often people forget to pop Repaint in and what happens is after your user generated event you've taken information from the user and probably you've got something in Paint that puts information on the screen. If you didn't have Repaint you won't get that new information. So I just pop Repaint in there and that will mean that the screen gets drawn again with the new information. Okay, so we've set this up ready for events by importing, implementing and putting in action performed. Repaint's also there to update our screen. Now what we said was this particular um, interface, let's just remind ourselves what it looks like, it's designed to get a name, a gender and an age. A name is a string, a gender is a string, and an age is an integer. So we're going to create or we're going to declare those variables ready for when we get the information out of the text fields, checkboxes, and choice menus. So we're going to declare a string called name, a string called gender, and an int called age. Now this is where I'll point out I've used name, gender and age in my other variables but I gave them additional information. I said name label and name input knowing that later on I would actually want the content being a name. So they've got similar names but they're not exactly the same. Remember you cannot use duplicate names, it will produce errors in your code. So we've got these things ready to accept the information from the form. One of the other things that we need to do before we can give those anything um, out of the form, we need to tell that button that it can listen. So we need to say submit dot add action listener and we're telling it to listen to this version of the button. That might seem a bit strange but if you don't put in this it won't work. So you're telling the button that it can listen to user generated events. Okay, that's all that this line does. If you forget to put that in, when you press submit, nothing will happen on your screen. Okay. All right. Hopefully you're with me so far. Nothing has changed in the appearance of our applet, except we've set up everything ready to accept input and be triggered by the button. So when they press the button, this method will be called. And what we want to do as soon as that happens is we want to get the information out of the name text field. So we're going to change the value of the variable name that we've just created. So it's a string and we want to get the text out of that field. So we need to refer to the, the text field which was called name input. Sorry, name input. And we want to get the text. So if you ever want to get text out of a text field, you use get text, open and close brackets, and a semicolon. All text fields are expected to have text input. If you want to get numbers out of text fields, there are additional things that you need to do. We're not covering that right now. Okay, we need to get the gender as well. Now this one's a little bit strange. First of all, we need to have a look at our, our checkbox or our group of checkboxes and that's called gender input. Then we need to get the checkbox that was selected but that will give us the checkbox, it won't give us the text. So we actually want to get the labels which were male or female. This bit will check which box was selected and then we need to get the label of that box and that will then assign the text female or male to gender. With the choice menu we are getting an age out and I'll just show you first we want to get the selected item so we want to figure out which item was selected. Now that's going to give me an error. 
and it will say there's a type mismatch. It cannot convert from string to int because the even though we put numbers in those boxes, it actually reads them as text. So we need to convert that to a number. So before we have age input, we put in sorry, we put integer dot parse int and open bracket. And then at the very end, before the semicolon, we put the close bracket. So this is giving us a string. It's giving us a text version of the number 15 or 16 or 17 or whatever. So then we are going to change it from a string to an integer. And that's what this line does. Okay, so it will take 15, convert it to the number 15, and then put it in the variable age. Then we're going to repaint the screen. There is currently nothing in that paint, so we could do that. We could assume it's worked, but we won't actually have visual feedback to know. So what we might do is we might put in a drawstring, and we'll put in name, and add on the variable name. We know that there's quite a bit of information in that uh, in that user interface, there's quite a few text fields and checkboxes and what have you. So we're going to put this one at a normal position across the screen, but we're actually going to have to put it down a fair way. So I might pop that one at, okay, my whole screen is 200 high. Um, I might put it at 150 and hope that it's not um, under anything. So I'm going to copy that line paste it and paste it again. I'm going to set the second one to gender. So plus the variable gender. And we're going to have age there as well. Set that one to age. Now remember that if I don't change the values here, they're all going to print on top of each other. So I'm going to put them one under the other with increments of 20. So let's just run that. Okay, so name is null, that means it currently doesn't have a value. Gender is null, again, it doesn't currently have a value, and age is zero. So when you declare a string but you don't give it a value, it sets it to null by default. When you have an integer or a double, it will set it to zero or 0, 0.0 as default. So let's put in some information. Let's go with Pippi Longstocking. Uh, Pippi Longstocking is female and is, I don't know, 17. So if we hit submit, what happens is it will jump out of our code, it will go to action performed, it will get the text from the name input, it will get the gender from the gender input, and it will get the age from age input, and then it will draw my screen again. So it should wipe away name is null, gender is null, age is zero, and replace it with name is Pippi Longstocking, gender is female, age is 17. And there we go. Now I can keep hitting submit. It's not going to change until I change the content. Now, just quickly as well, I put the action listener on the submit button with this piece of code here. If I had a text field, and I wanted somebody to be able to press enter when their cursor was in the text field, then I would just put name input dot add action listener. If you want anything to be able to trigger an event, you put the component name dot add action listener this, and that will allow that to happen. Okay, that is a basic summary of events based on form components.